Well, holy hell, Microsoft has just made an absolutely industry-shaking acquisition in acquiring Bethesda Game Studios for a grandiose $7.5 billion. Absolutely insane. This is without a doubt one of the biggest acquisitions in gaming history. You can make an argument it is the biggest. It outpaces things like Insomniac and as big as an acquisition that was for Sony to get Insomniac to join their worldwide studios, but Bethesda joining Microsoft is absolutely colossal. There's a lot to talk about. I know a lot of people are upset, but this is the game we play, and i much rather acquisitions of, you know, these companies of Microsoft to Sony acquiring an entire studio than just paying a third party a lot of money to create a timed exclusive. I think that model is really lame. If you want to acquire a studio and then you want to, you know, initiate them into the fold of your ecosystem i have no problem with that i think that's just natural that we're gonna see in gaming and that's why uh, microsoft has been in acquisition mode you know acquiring an obsidian and all these other studios so they can have a solid first party lineup of games and this acquisition um you know think about all the franchises they're getting i'm actually looking for a phil spencer tweet that had an image of all of the franchises that they've just acquired with this. Okay, so think about this for a second, and this is only scratching the surface. You're talking about Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Starfield, Prey, and there's so many more games on top of that. Bethesda has an insane library of games, and their vault is absolutely stacked. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of recent Bethesda with, like, Fallout 76, but come on, guys, don't create this narrative that Bethesda's never been talented. I'm seeing stuff on Twitter, like, oh, you're just taking the franchises that are super buggy or a buggy console gets buggy games I mean come on if Sony acquired Bethesda the narrative would be completely shifted this is an insane acquisition honestly Remember how we talked about, you know, Microsoft wasn't going as hard on the third-party acquisitions or deals that Sony was. I mean, Sony's getting all these timed exclusives, whether it be a Final Fantasy 16 or something like that. Uh, honestly, a lot of their uh, money may have gone to this Bethesda acquisition. I'm sure they had it in the back of their mind, you know, we can't be spending money on everything. Sony wants to get their Final Fantasy. We got Bethesda in our back pocket, and this is a colossal announcement. And also add to the fact that these games are probably going to be right on Xbox Game Pass. You're talking Elder Scrolls 6 on Game Pass. You're talking the next Fallout on Game Pass. You're talking the next Wolfenstein, Doom, all of that just on Game Pass right away. That is huge. That is enormous. Now, it should be added, and you guys probably remember that Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop had exclusivity deals with a uh, with uh, Sony for the PlayStation 5 releases, and... Um, Microsoft is going to be okay with that. They're going to stay committed to that. They're okay with Bethesda having those games as time exclusive. So that's cool on their part. I mean, that deal was probably secured before this acquisition actually happened, so it's kind of understandable. Also, as far as Bethesda games coming to PlayStation 5 and other platforms, they did say it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis, so it's not a complete, you know, shut the door, Bethesda games will never come to PlayStation anymore, but I would imagine that if you're spending $7.5 billion on a studio and a company like Bethesda, man, oh man, I would have some of those games as exclusives, or at the very least, timed exclusives on Microsoft platforms. Obviously, they're going to continue releasing their games on PC, and Bethesda games are probably ideally played on PC, when you're talking about games like Doom, when you're talking about Skyrim, Fallout, all of those games. The ideal version is on PC, however, if you're a console guy... You know, those are franchises that absolutely sell you on a platform. Final Fantasy 16 for a lot of people is going to sell them on that platform, but ultimately, when Elder Scrolls 6 does eventually come out, when the next Doom comes out, those are colossal, colossal exclusives. Console exclusives, I should say, because they are going to be on PC at the end of the day. But as far as console exclusives go, those are gargantuan to have on your platform, and that's really going to sway people one way or the other. I think Microsoft absolutely absolutely needed a move like this. Pre-orders go live tomorrow, and I don't think it's coincidental at all that we got the announcement today to drum up interest and hype. But the timing of this uh, obviously makes a lot of sense. So where do we go from here? What is going to happen to the future of Bethesda? I don't really know. It's exciting. I want to see where they go. Obviously, if you're only a PlayStation guy, those are some big, big franchises to miss out on, man. But hey, Xbox Series S is $300. You're talking about a $300 console with Xbox Game Pass. The unfortunate problem is these games aren't going to come out anytime soon. Xbox has a lot of stuff in the works. Whether you talk about Halo Infinite, whether you talk about Fable, whether you you talk about the game Obsidian is making that I keep forgetting the name of. 
I believe it's called Avowed Set in the Pillars of Eternity Universe. Those games are gargantuan. Those games are huge games, but you're not talking about anything for 2020. When the Xbox Series' launch lineup is Assassin's Creed or Ragnarok or Valhalla. I keep calling Ragnarok. Assassin's Creed Valhalla and then Gears of War Tactics. I'm sorry, that is a completely atrocious launch, but what they're building up, Bethesda Games, Game Pass, they're building up a very, very solid ecosystem here, and I'm excited for the future of Xbox. And, you know, as a Sony console owner, the majority of you guys are probably going to be a little bit upset about this, but Microsoft needed to make a move like this. There was not a lot of interest in the Xbox Series consoles, and I still think it would have sold out because the initial hype is always going to be there. But now you're talking about a $300 console with the option of getting the $500 Series X, and all of these games are now going to be exclusive franchise, at least console exclusive. At least they can decide to do that if they so see fit. Uh, those are some big, big games, man. They just bolstered up their library quite a bit. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I imagine a lot of people are going to be upset about this because these are some revered franchises, but definitely sound off down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.